Hello, my name is Eunice and I'm from the School of Hotel and Tourism Management uh, from the Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Um, today my lecture is uh, titled City Slicker to Rural Carer and it's going to talk about the wildlife volunteerism. So as you can see from this next slide that we have here, the outline, we're going to first look at some of the key concepts and literature uh, that will be discussing our topic within the context of. And secondly, we'll be looking at the case study of wildlife volunteerism and sharing some of the results from that study as well. Finally, we'll be looking at the summary of some of the key points as well as suggestions for improvement. So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's get started. In terms of volunteer tourism, in recent years, there's been a growing interest and participation in such give back getaways. Tourists today do not just want to have the usual experiences, they want to go beyond just the normal sightseeing, commercial attractions and so forth. And if you look at volunteer tourism, it is seen as a synthesis of both the tourism activity as well as the volunteering um, activities. And so mutual benefits are created for both the participants, which is the tourism component, as well as the community at which the activities are taking place, which is the volunteering component. At the same time, we also highlight that there's a need to differentiate between the different types of tourists. If you look at this slide here, if we look at the volunteer tourists, their main motivation for a lot of these tourists is a commitment to a specific course or a particular project that they feel very passionate about. Whereas if you look at the other type of volunteerist, the volunteerist, the main motivation or driver is actually the tourism or leisure activity that decides where they want to go, what sort of project that they will be supporting. At the same time, we also look at studies where they differentiate between the volunteer-minded traveller and the vacation-minded traveller. These different types of volunteer tourism um, participants would display values and characteristics that are different. So for our lecture today, we're going to be focusing on several key aspects of wildlife volunteerism. Firstly, we're going to look at the motives for selecting a volunteer activity. Why do they choose that site? What is the rationale behind that choice of destination? At the same time, we would also like to look at uh, pre-trip preparation because the amount of preparation that they undertake prior to their arrival would help to set and manage some of the expectations um, of the volunteer and ultimately the overall experience and level of satisfaction. Thirdly, our lecture today will also look at the depth of learning. As an educator myself, I'm very interested always in the educational and learning process. So therefore, the third part of our lecture will look at the context of self-transformation or self-development as a result of the experience. So let's start with first a review of several key concepts and literature. I will start with first uh, the concepts of comparing, contrasting between volunteerism, tourism, and volunteerism. When we think about volunteering, very often when you ask somebody, who is a volunteer? What is a volunteer? They would say that volunteers are those who choose to act in a socially responsible manner. There is this desire to contribute be it for a uh, social cause, a particular social action, or something that they feel personally connected to. Sometimes it could be because to fulfill personal gratification or empathies. But regardless, volunteers volunteer because there is something that drives them, a motive behind, and so therefore organizations have to recognize that need that drives someone's um, you know, motives to participate in such volunteer activities. If you look at volunteerism within the context of tourism, in today's market there is a wide range and different uh, volunteer opportunities available and the same number are vying for not only donations but volunteers as well. So therefore, the key to successful initiation and the long-term sustainability of such programs is first and foremost to identify 
who the suitable volunteers are, what their motivations are, and to be able to understand those motivations and needs. Next, we'll look at the uh, concept of tourism. I'm not going to go through definitions of tourism because um, I'm sure many of you would be familiar with that. But one of the things that we need to highlight is that tourism, at the end of the day, is a social, cultural, as well as economic phenomenon. I always share with my students that we are in the business of selling memories and experiences. And in today's touristic culture, people do not just want the usual mundane, generic tourist activities. They are looking for more distinctive ways to spend their leisure time. They want to holiday with a purpose. And so therefore, they would seek to have a much better or greater involvement and engagement at the destinations at which they will be traveling to. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now we look at the context of voluntourism. Voluntourism is seen as an alternative form of tourism. Uh, a lot of these tourism activities, although there's a wide range and variety of uh, volunteer tourism activities, the majority of these activities tend to be community-led, people-centered. Um, at the same time, it also emphasizes a lot on the distribution of benefits. How do these benefits gained from tourism um, spread throughout the community um, as well as the region in which tourism is occurring? At the same time, we also highlight the fact that volunteers uh, participating in such volunteerism activities usually volunteer in an organized manner. That means that when they undertake such activities, it is normally with a specific purpose and also organized in a way that fulfills certain needs. For example, alleviating the poverty of an area, restoration of the environment, uh, social cultural research, and so on and so forth. We generally do not consider a lot of these ad hoc or one-off um, activities as part of the volunteerism phenomenon. At the same time, if you look at uh, many of the um, research studies on volunteerism, there are several commonalities as well. Firstly, many of these volunteers seek for meaningful experiences. They want to be involved. They want to be engaged and uh, as part of the local community at which they visit. At the same time, beyond the personal and social benefits, um, there are also desires for a more immediate connection and looking at the tangible benefits and contributions to the destination or where the activities are being undertaken. The next part of the literature, I would like to look at this key question, asking whether is volunteerism truly a beneficial um, type of tourism or is it an oxymoron? We acknowledge that in today's paradigm shift, this idea and philosophy of paying it forward seems to give the ideal uh, semiotic relationship. However, we also recognize that many of the volunteers in studies have said that they undertake these volunteer tourism activities because of the adventure, because of the challenge, or even the novelty or status of it. So there are contrasting altruistic and personal motives. At the same time, the next point is we need to highlight volunteer tourists often do not discard all of the characteristics commonly exhibited by other typical tourists. At the end of the day, they are still travelers and tourists. Therefore, they would need to utilize the similar resources and services. They would use the similar infrastructure. And therefore, the impacts and consequences might be similar or shared as well. Uh, in fact, authors such as Weaver had um, highlighted this concept of veneer volunteer tourism where he questions whether is it a facade or does it really generate tangible benefits for um, the stakeholders and the host community. The third part of this section, we also ask the question, can volunteerism truly make a real difference and can it be a catalyst for change, positive change, 
or because of misplaced generosity leads to issues such as dependency, it leads to issues such as um, inequalities in terms of power hierarchies, uh, in terms of inequalities and in power between the visitor and host relationship, etc. At the same time, if not managed properly, these types of tourism can end up being a burden uh, for both the local community as well as its environment, be it natural or uh, environmental. The third part of our discussion here on the concepts and literature looks at voluntourism as a transformative uh, journey. In this section here, I'm interested in the concept of transformative learning. As I mentioned before, as an educator myself, I'm always interested in the learning and educational process. So in this section, we look at the concept of self-development. What is the type of process that the volunteers would go through as they live that volunteer experience? Through the lived experience and involvement, they would change, they might transform, they might learn, and so all these new uh, discoveries and personal reflections might lead to a cathartic nature and facilitate um, impacts on the volunteer themselves and it also looks at benefits that they gain in terms of the trilogy of gains like mental health, physical health, life satisfaction um, and so on and so forth. Some even have mentioned the idea of self-actualization because of the experience that they have gone through. As you can see from this slide here, this model of transformative sustainable learning proposes a 3H model where the combination of head, hands and heart are the key to sustainable learning. And in transformative learning, the head provides the cognitive uh, element of the learning process, whereas the hands, of course the action oriented, will look at the psychomotor uh, features of learning. And finally the heart, this is looking at the uh, the so-called, sorry, the affective and uh, emotional aspects of learning as well. So it's a combination of these three elements that create uh, sustainable transformative learning. We will come back to this model again in a little while. Now, having gone through some of the key concepts in literature, let's now uh, explore a case study of wildlife volunteerism. And this case study is based on Boyab Brook, uh, Western Australia, and a sanctuary named Rugali Wildlife Sanctuary. In this study, we'll be investigating the wildlife volunteer tourist profile based on these dimensions below. But before we go into that, let us first have a brief uh, intro about the study site. As we mentioned before, this study was conducted uh, with Rugali Wildlife Sanctuary in Bearbrook, Western Australia uh, as the focus population. We do have to highlight that Rugali is not a zoo or a commercial wildlife park. Um, as a registered charity, it relies a lot on the support of donations as well as sponsors, etc for its operations. It is a working wildlife sanctuary um, and education center specializing in the care of injured, sick, orphaned, marsupials and other Australian wildlife. There are several programs that they have in terms of um, fundraising and sponsorships, etc. Uh, for example, its Adopt a Rue Gali Rue program um, is one of the avenues. At the same time, it also has its popular series, the Rue Gali Diaries as well. Rugali opens its doors to volunteers, researchers, students, graduates, or even just regular folk like myself um, who are interested in working with wildlife. Um, because of the immersive volunteer role that is expected, volunteers are required to participate in all aspects of um, its operations and during their stay there. As such, many of the volunteers that do uh, participate in its program actually do stay there a lot longer uh, than your regular uh, volunteer programs. And we'll discuss this in a little while. As you can see from this slide here, during the study we asked participants not only to share their biogeographical profiles, but also in terms of where they get their information from. As you can see from the slide here, 
many of the volunteers that went to Rugali said that it was their first time. Their duration of stay ranged from between two weeks to nine months, although for the most part, the average would be between about a month to three or six months. In terms of the source of information, it was interesting to note that majority of the respondents highlighted that they had the initial information obtained from their education institutions, um, particularly for those students who are undertaking it as part of their internship placement um, or, for example, uh, part of their educational uh, visits and so forth. At the same time, they also had uh, internet search listed as one of the information sources. Finally, the third major category is personal sources, uh, particularly those who said that they found out information from fellow graduates or students who have been volunteers before or who have just returned from the volunteer trip. The second part asked uh, the volunteers to share with us their um, experiences, their motives, why did they select that particular site or that particular region. And as you can see from the diagram here on the slide, the main reasons for volunteering and the site selection process is as such. Uh, a very common reason was because of practical experience, particularly for internship. This we saw with a lot of students, particularly those in um, veterinary science, for example, um, zoology, and so on and so forth. There are also other respondents who said that because of their own personal or vocational interests. Two common uh, reasons, as you can see from next two, firstly, the passion for wildlife. In particular, many of the respondents have said that they had chosen the destination and the site because they specifically wanted to work with Australian wildlife, as well as the social cultural characteristics of a place. Um, there are even several respondents who said, I chose this destination because it was in Australia, because I wanted to work with Australian wildlife. Finally, as you can see from the bottom of the slide, we will also need to consider two other elements. Several of the respondents had also highlighted that the reputation and integrity of the volunteer organization played a big part in their decision whether or not to choose that site. Therefore, they will look to word of mouth. They look at recommendations from friends or from others who have gone through the same uh, experience. They would also look at online reviews of former volunteers, blogs, social networking, whatever it is, many of these word of mouth and reviews from past volunteers played a big part to make the decision to volunteer at Rugali because it helps to reduce the risk variance. The next section of the um, study we looked at what sort of preparation prior to arrival did these volunteers undertake? So in examining the pre-trip preparations, the reason why we did it is because we recognized that the amount of preparation prior to arrival would set expectations or at least would help to form um, the information, the knowledge and expectations of these volunteers. And this in turn would influence or affect the overall experience and ultimately the level of satisfaction. From the study, we recognize that the degree of preparation and knowledge does affect expectations as experience. For example, when volunteers read about the typical day of a volunteer, they recognize and understand what their roles and responsibilities will be, what the learning outcomes will be gained. And so therefore, it helps them to prepare for their experience or their commitment at the sanctuary or wherever they are going to. From the results that we gathered, there are two main categories as far as pre-trip preparations are concerned. The first one is travel plans. So these are general things like, for example, application of visa, uh, accommodation, transportation, getting to the place, getting to the sanctuary, getting to um, the township and so forth. Secondly, is information about Rugali and the region. For example, there were some respondents who talked about um, reading up about the region, reading up about the wildlife, about the place, medicine, uh, animal care, and so forth. Or even something as simple as what equipment to buy or footwear that they need to prepare for. 
This slide here highlights just some of the common narratives that were identified by respondents when asked about their overall experience. Uh, some of the common ones which I will go through with you include um, respondents and, and participants saying that they wanted to see the real Australia rather than just the tourist site that is commonly seen on brochures. At the same time, they also highlighted the uh, importance of having an authentic uh, social cultural exchange. As I mentioned before, the social cultural characteristics of the destination um, or region played a part. At the same time, some respondents have highlighted that you know this was the best thing they've ever done. It was a proud moment for them. Uh, it was life altering. It was an amazing experience. But whatever it is, many of the respondents did have very strong uh, emotive narrations and feelings about their experience. And which leads us to the next slide. As you can see from the diagram here, we are here sharing the narratives about any memorable or challenging incidents that they had gone through or experienced during the volunteer experience. And so, as you can see from here, some of the common categories included things like, for example, um, seeing and experiencing the unique flora and fauna uh, endemic to the region. Many of the respondents have said that they experience such flora and fauna that they wouldn't get a chance to see anywhere else in the world. At the same time, they also highlighted the fact that feeding and caring for the wildlife was very um, something that they connected with uh, closely as well. In addition to wildlife, we also have the human kind as well. So we look at interpersonal relationships. Uh, there were challenges when you live with and work with culturally diverse uh, people from all over the world. Finally, a great proportion, majority of the respondents have said that it is because of the uh, generosity, the support and kindness of the staff, of the founder and manager at the sanctuary that made their entire experience more meaningful and memorable. Finally, in this section, we look at the uh, tourism-related activities. We actually asked participants what sort of activities tourism-related activities that they participate in during, before, or after their volunteer activity. As you can see from the pie chart here in the slide, the majority of respondents had only traveled within Western Australia and the region, with a small number traveling within other destinations in Australia and internationally. There was only one respondent who said she didn't travel. Possibly the reason is because she was a local student studying in Western Australia and hence was only there for a shorter period of time. The last part of the research looked at the depth of learning and self-transformation. Now there were a lot of narratives that were discussed and highlighted by the respondents and the participants you know um, answers were categorized into nine key thematic clusters. On this left side here of the screen on the slides, you can see that these were clustered around uh, work, around learning, around practical skills. So for example, things like learning about teamwork, conflict management, like I said before, working with diverse uh, people from different backgrounds and so forth. Uh, building professional or vocational skills, particularly students on internship. At the same time, also there were many respondents who highlighted the fact that it helped to shape their own personal perceptions, outlooks and goals. For example, there were some who highlighted that it changed their interest in the type of volunteer work that they will do and what they would do in the future. Also, there were respondents who said that it contributed towards um, their future career choice or even location at which they will be seeking uh, their careers. Finally, on the right hand side, you can see that these are uh, factors relating to the uh, communication skills, culture, social cultural uh, experiences, learning with new ways of life, especially with their interaction um, with the local community and with all the other volunteers from different backgrounds as well. Many of the volunteers also said that they had made lifelong friends and per professional connections, myself included as well after my own um, volunteer experience as well.
Finally, in this section on uh, learning and self-transformation, if you think back to the diagram that we highlighted just now on the 3H, from this table, you can see some of the examples of wildlife volunteer experiences that relate to the head, the hands, the heart, and all the other combinations. So, for example, it could be something as basic as helping to clean out the enclosures, uh, building fences, or it could be about you know, preparation of food, feeding of the animals, care of the animals, or even acting as surrogate mums for orphaned joeys who are needing critical care. So in sum, from this study that we've done, there were several common narratives uh, that we saw. And if you can see from the slide here, of course, many of the volunteers or past volunteers had talked about their experiences, how their experiences had shaped the way they think, their points of view, their personal development, and so forth. Some have even said that they were proud of what they have gone through. Their sense of self and respect has also uh, grown as well. In addition to the spiritual well-being, social well-being, etc., a number of volunteers had talked about an appreciation for having been not only a part of the place, but also a part of the community. Community in terms of the local residents, in terms of the uh, community of volunteers around the world that have previously or soon to volunteer at this sanctuary, as well as being a part of the country, Western Australia, the region in particular. And also, from the studies, we found that even though volunteers may have different levels of preparation and different levels of expectations, generally speaking, the amount of preparation would help in building uh, the information and knowledge that they would have and ultimately frame and set the expectations. At the same time, the study had also emphasized a lot that the type of wildlife played a big part. And this is something we see in a lot of studies, or at least those studies available on wildlife volunteer tourists, that they select a place because of an emphasis or passion for a particular type of wildlife. Finally, of course, as with all volunteer activities, the desire to give back, the desire to contribute to a worthwhile cause was also highlighted. In terms of observations learned, I would like to share with you this slide here where I feel personally that effective interpretation is critical and important in any kind of volunteer and conservation programs. If you think about many of these programs, this information, knowledge, uh, tools that you use to communicate such information helps to set and manage expectations. For example, on the website, or on other social networks uh, by learning about the typical day of a volunteer, by learning about the expectations and responsibilities of a volunteer, it helps them to prepare better for the trip. Ultimately, this leads to more positive experiences and finally, of course, satisfaction. Through that, we see a lot more um, word-of-mouth endorsements, um, higher revisits. Uh, many of the volunteers have gone back multiple times, and also uh, greater connections in terms of uh, support for this sanctuary, for the cause, um, sponsorship donations, and so forth. This is particularly important for non-profit organizations and volunteer organizations or low-profile rural communities like Boyer Brook. For example, Burke Brook is not your typical large tourist town or destination. Many of the travelers who go there or come to Rugali come with the specific motivation of being there for their volunteer tourism trip. And so therefore, the benefits uh, for the community can be also uh, seen as well. Finally, uh, the last suggestion is looking at the 3H model that we just discussed. There's a suggestion that I feel that we should include is this element of feedback and therefore the proposal of an additional H, which is hindsight or the E of evaluation. We have already discussed the 3H earlier on, but I feel that the inclusion of this post-activity dimension helps significantly in the 
a transformative learning process by being able to look back and to reflect on the experience participants will be able to evaluate um, and see what they've gone through and so therefore uh, reinforce the learning process so as you can see from this last slide here um, by including hindsight or evaluation into this model and include make it into a 4-H model of transformative learning, it will help to reinforce a much better effectual and sustained transformative learning for the volunteers. I hope that you found this lecture useful. Um, before we end the lecture today, I have included a last slide here which you may want to undertake by yourself, uh, with your group or with your classmates. In this learning activity, I would like you to explore other sites and other types of volunteer tourism organizations. So take a look at some websites, maybe two or three, it's up to you. Um, look at what are the programs that they offer, what sort of destinations uh, do they include, do they support specific causes or projects, different types of volunteer programs. Also think about who these programs are targeted at and look at some of the stories that have been shared. There are a lot of websites nowadays that share online reviews and comments. Look at these comments of past volunteers. Are they positive? Are they negative? What aspects of their experience do they share? And think about what were the main factors that influenced the positive and or negative experience. So, I hope you have fun with this uh, exercise. And before I end today, the last two slides are essentially on some um, useful readings or references that you can use if you're interested in this topic. So, thank you.